Hi everyone, this is Raymond Wood on the Raymond Wood podcast. Now we're very, very excited uh, to bring another episode, but also we're super excited to bring one of our players, Nathan Long, who's on our professional player pathway program with us. I believe, Nathan, you are with us. How are you? Yeah, I'm all good. Now, where are we speaking to you from, Nathan, for all of our listeners watching or listening? Hurst, uh, Australia. Uh, Here from Australia. Now, I believe you joined us on our program, was it around about April this year? Is that right? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So you joined us on our professional player pathway. So what we're going to do is for the next 15, 20 minutes, we're going to walk through our listeners and mums and dads out there who are maybe already on the program or who are considering joining the program. And we're going to walk through some of the pillars of the program and see some of the best bits that you're enjoying. Maybe some of the bits you're not enjoying, all the extra effort you're having to put in. So, Nathan, you joined us in Perth. You come along to our professional player pathway event and you signed up and registered as one of our new players. You got a scholarship to join us. Uh, what was the best bit for you about the event when you come out and first seeing it? And what was the one thing that really excited you about the program? Um, well, I really enjoyed the objective testing. Like, it was like a good breakdown. And um, with the event, we actually were recommended by Liam Williams, and um, he's doing well now overseas. So, like, they recommended to our family, and then they're like, "Yeah, definitely, like, sign up. Like, it's worth a shot." So, yeah, it's a, it's a really good one, and I'm glad that you've actually mentioned uh, Liam Williams. So, Liam Williams is a player we found just over a year ago from Perth. Since being with us on our pro player pathway, Liam's now successfully moved across to the UK. And he signs with a professional club called Bolton Wanderers Football Club. So it's pretty cool. So you guys were obviously friends in Perth and you were playing together? Oh, uh, yeah. And like family friends as well. Like go to events and that, whatever. Now, obviously, we know Liam is a big Everton fan and he supports the blue side of Liverpool. I'm looking at your jersey. You're a little bit more south. You support Arsenal, like? Eh? Yeah. So who's your favourite player at Arsenal? Oh, uh, I got Oh, the guard, very good. So we had a good summer this year with his national team. We are super excited. The Professional Player Pathway book is finally here. It's just launched. You can now purchase this book. If you want to learn what it takes to make it as a professional football player, if you've got a son or daughter who's aged between 7 and 8, all the way up to 23, this has got the seven pillars and the seven secrets on how to make it in the Premier League, in La Liga, in the top leagues around Europe. The project that I worked on, the Premier League and the FA spent £1.6 billion to date on this project. It produced players like Lauren James of Chelsea, Jude Bellingham of Real Madrid, Trent Alexander-Arnold of Liverpool and many, many more. Guys, if you want to make it as a pro, the Professional Player Pathway book is the book for you. Now, in regards to the professional player pathway, you obviously, you come along, you've signed up now. We got you on a on a, a part scholarship to join us on the program. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the pillars of the program. Now, one of the pillars that we do is something called our intolerance testing and DNA testing. Have you had your test done? Yeah. And what was, just to explain to the mums and dads out there and anyone who's listening, so our intolerance DNA test, we actually take a hair sample from our players, send it off to a laboratory, and it's the world's first individualised intolerance test. So it flags up any foods, drinks, products, home products that might be causing intolerances in your body, and it might create things like inflammation. So they're things that we want to ward against as a professional football player. What was your results like? What were some of the red things that come up, Nathan, on your test? Um, it was most like dairy products and then uh, Weetabix, which I used to have every morning. So we never replaced that with porridge. And then chicken was a big one as well. So it's more like uh, other meats now. Wow. So you had to get rid of the dairy products pretty much. I was the same when I had my test done. And that's not, not surprising that 80% of our people who get tested actually flag up uh, not to have milk or dairy anymore. Because it yeah. does actually cause an inflammation, not only in many parts of the body, but we've discovered it causes inflammation in the throat as well, which can affect your breathing, which is a big thing, actually. So was that a big shock for you, Nathan, having to get rid of dairy products, or was you not really into dairy products? Oh, no, it's probably one of my favourite foods, like, definitely. <laughs> 
Now, the good thing is you can get retested again six or 12 months later. And some of those foods that you've removed out your diet, when you re-add them back in, it might actually go off your list. So the good news is we've actually seen players, especially we've had chicken flag up, which is a really interesting one. About 60% of people get chicken. Now, what we've discovered is with chicken, and it might be good news for you because do you actually like to eat chicken? Yeah. Yeah. What we've discovered is there's a lot of uh, chickens that are not organic that get a lot of hormones and salts and water pumped into them, obviously for the size and the weight, so they can sell them on and make more money on them. What we've discovered is in some of our players and athletes have actually uh, started eating organic chicken again, but they've, re- they've got retested. Chicken has gone off the list. They've re-added it in, and it's been fine. So that's something that we can look at doing. Once you've been with us for about 12 months, if you want to get retested again, we can uh, get that arranged for you and get it booked in, and then we can have a look, and maybe chicken might come back onto your, onto your blacklist. Yeah. Now, was was there, was there anything on there that you was happy that you don't normally eat anyway, but it was on there that you can think of, or anything that you drink or don't drink? Uh, more like nuts and stuff I don't really eat anyway, but yeah. They come up on your, on your results yeah. as well. Now, since you've uh, got those test results, being really honest to all of our listeners, have you pretty much stuck to it, or is there certain things that you, you're still eating that you shouldn't, or...? And no, uh, not like most of it. Yeah, definitely. But, like, switch fully off all the red stuff. Have you noticed any differences since you've done that? Like anything to do with like sleep or recovery or skin or hair? Yeah, like well, skin's a big one. I reckon because my skin wasn't that great like a few months ago, and then um, sleeping as well. Yeah, and then I feel like more energy maybe. Yeah, like I mean, I'm I'm looking at you. And your skin looks phenomenal, and it's funny that. Yeah, I've been the same. I, I even in, you know, I'm in my forties, but I did have a lot of problems with like acne and that still. Yeah. And since since I've done my test, I've removed everything. I was blown away of how good it was, and I wanted to get it done just purely to give it a go and get it tested to see what it was like. But it's been a game changer. Now, one of the other pillars on the program is match analysis. Now, have you had your match analysis done? Yeah, it's a few weeks ago. So again, for the mums and dads who are watching and listening in and the other players who are maybe interested in joining the programme, we do a match analysis. We get your game recorded. We send it off to Portugal. It gets analysed. It comes back. We then assign you a coach from England. Then they do a Zoom call with you for one hour, so very similar to what we're doing now. And then we draw out your objectives and the, the, the bits that we need to work on. So firstly, when you've done your match analysis, if you don't mind sharing it, who did you do it with? Oh, it was the, the like, it was the Jimmy Cope, like Jimmy Rovers, Matt Hunter. Oh, so you did it with Matt Hunter from Tramia Rovers, amazing. So for anyone who's watching in, Matt Hunter is not only a coach of Tramia Rovers, which is a professional team from on the outskirts of Liverpool, but also Matt's a FA educator as well and coach educator. So... Talk to me when you've done your match analysis. What was your first uh, thoughts of it? Do you think it was valuable? Was it not valuable? Yeah, no, it's definitely valuable, yeah. Like, so c- can you remember when you done your match analysis with Matt and you went through your objectives? What was the one or two objectives that you had to start working on straight away? What was flagged up in your game? Oh, uh, again, like, not, not as much, but you said start gaining anyway, just like get the foundation... But that wasn't like a big concern though. But what's the one area of your game that you think's got better since you've been doing your objectives? Is the one area that you think I've really got better at in the past couple of months since you started it? Uh probably like more so like body positioning. Like just yeah, my, yeah, like, yeah. Because normally I scan to my left because I play on the right. So, but checking both ways now instead. That's good. And then within our system, for anyone again who's watching and listening and who doesn't understand our seven pillars, the match objectives that get drawn out from the match analysis, we input them to our football plan, which is our web-based portal. So are you still on your first objective at the moment, Nathan, or are you have you moved on to your second? So you're still on your first objective? Yeah. And that's currently scanning at the moment? Yeah. And... What percentage are you currently at with your achievement? Where are you at with it at the moment? Like 40s. So you're in the 40s. So what percentage, again, just for our listeners, 
what percentage have you got to get to so before you can move to your next one? Is it 80? 85%. Right. Yeah. So obviously, that's a good starting point. Most players, when they do scan them, they'll maybe get 10 or 20% at most. Uh, but we need players to get to 85%. Once they get to 85%, we give that a big tick, and then we move them on to the second objective. So that's good that you're working through that. So that's obviously your DNA, your match analysis. Now, there's a couple of other pillars in there as well. One of the ones that we do want to talk about as well is the GPS tracker. So yeah. one of the pillars is the tracker. So have you found that being valuable and have you been wearing it as much as possible? Yeah, like I wear it like nearly every time actually. That's great. And what's, what's one of the things that you've noticed since you've started wearing the tracker? Is it educating you in any way? Is it making you try harder? Is it making you work less? No, like probably more motivating because you can like compare yourself with like academies like around your age as well. That's really, really good. So one of the big things that we do, again, for the listeners listening in, is we get players to not only train in the GPS trackers, but they wear the trackers on game days. And we record things like the amount of sprints they do in a game, how many accelerations, how many decelerations, what distance they cover, how hard they're working in certain areas of the pitch. The good thing with this is for all of our players is that we know exactly where they're at in comparison to players in the UK and Europe. And we can have that meeting if we don't believe they're working hard enough or if they need to be recording more sessions. So that that is a really, really invaluable tool. And as Nathan's just alluded to, he's wearing it as much as possible, which is a great thing to see. Now, out of the seven pillars, and I've got a feeling I know which one it is, but I'm going to ask you, which is your favourite pillar of the programme and why? Uh, probably the match analysis. Yeah, it's the one that we get all the time, the match analysis, because I think it not only shows you in that one meeting that you do with the coach, the areas you've got to get better at, but it's an invaluable tool because you get the recording and you can watch it back as many times as you can. So out of interest, how many times do you think you've watched it since you've done the meeting? Like, uh, like three. That's good. One of the things we do encourage the players is to keep watching it at least once a month, once a fortnight, just to keep going over the certain points and objectives that the coaches have spoke to them about. And it's a, it's a good way to, to assist with that. So one of the other pillars is obviously we take players on trials to the UK and to Europe. Now, just for all of our listeners, if you are pushing through your objectives and you get through at least two or more, or you're on track to complete two or more, by the time we're going on trials, you are eligible to come on the trials with us. And that's where we open up opportunities for pro scholarships. So every January, we always visit England, the Premier League, and we take players to academies and pro clubs for trials. In the June, July, we take players to Paris Saint-Germain in France and also to Spain, to Barcelona. Now, Nathan, for our listeners out there, can you tell us if you are firstly being invited to join any trials? And if you were, have you accepted? And are you going on any next year? Oh, uh, yeah. The, uh, is it June, July? The PSG and is it Westpac or was? Or... Was pack with Barcelona and Spain, yeah. yeah. So you're going to be coming along for that. So... You must be super excited and pumped for that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you been to France and to Spain before? Uh, yeah, actually, I have. Yeah, and did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's nice. Would you like to make it as a professional footballer? My friend Ray Wood has written this amazing book, The Pro Player Pathway, that gives you the secret to becoming a professional. So... Let's roll forward with a year or two and, and you're going to sign and play professional football. Where would you choose to move and play for? Which team? Would it be a French team, a Spanish team, or would it be somewhere in England? What's your dream? Uh, um, probably um, go to Ireland, maybe. To where, sorry? Uh, Ireland. To play in Ireland? Wow, I didn't think that one. So who would you like to go and play for in Ireland? Like Shane McGrover's, I'd be. Shamrock Rovers, amazing. So I've actually 
many years ago, I done one of my UEFA qualifications with the FAI in Dublin. And oh. uh, we've done a couple of visits and study visits to Shamrock Rovers. It's an amazing club, uh, amazing people. And I believe one of the guys I was on the course with, he still actually works at Shamrock Rovers. So maybe that's something we could uh, we could open up for you as well uh, in the next couple of months. So what we'll do is I'll have a chat with the guys at Shamrock and uh, maybe see if we could squeeze that in at some point next year or the following year for you. Yeah, thanks. So, you know, you're going to be going on the trials in June and July, and we're obviously going to take you to PSG and to Wazpac in Barcelona. Uh, what's probably one or two of the highlights that you're going to be looking forward uh, to that trip? What's one of the key things you're looking forward to? Um, Like saying different levels in Europe, like in comparison... And then, I know it's a good experience or like good thing to have on your record. Yeah, it's going to be a good thing. It's going to show you the levels in Paris. It'll show you the levels in Barcelona. And then in comparison uh, to England and to Ireland as well. So it's going to be going to be super exciting. Now, what's one of the things that you really want to try and get better at yourself? So we know we've got scanning and you're working on NAFI objectives, but What's the one area in your game, Nathan, that you think you've really got to get better at and that you're going to try and work on over the next 12 months? Um, probably my movement, like on and off the ball, like like using double movement to get more time on the ball. Amazing. And again, with that, you can keep an eye on that widget GPS tracker as well. Uh, also, especially when you're monitoring your objectives. So when you're monitoring your objectives and you're doing your scanning, there's a couple of ways for players and mums and dads listening and wondering how we do this. So what we do is there's a couple of ways you can do it. Nathan can play in a game. He could have a friend, a mum or a dad helping him out. And they basically have a piece of paper, a pen. If he's working on scanning, every time the ball's coming into Nathan's vicinity, if he remembers to scan across both shoulders, that goes down as a big tick. If he doesn't scan at all or he only scans on one shoulder, it goes down as a cross. And at the end of the game, if he gets five successful, five unsuccessful, he inputs that into the system and it gives him a success rate of 50%. The other way you can do it, you can get a recording of your game. And this is one of the things that we really encourage the players to do at least a couple of times a year is watch one or two or more of the games back and actually record their score themselves by watching the game. So out of curiosity, Nathan, how are you recording your scanning at the moment? Uh, like watching back the videos. Like, yeah. That's I know it isn't. Yeah, I know you put it in like two times to say it does take a while to get through it. Yeah, it, it does. And it, and it is it is quite long process. However, what we discovered in the Premier League was when I worked at Leicester City and they're a Category 1 academy, so they're a the top-level academy in England. We discovered that by getting the players to watch the game back and watch for objectives, it was actually a good way to realise areas that they aren't doing well in in the game, but areas that they were doing well in as well. So were you finding when you watch the game back, you're actually noticing things like you're not moving into spaces and you are getting a bit static? Yeah. That must be invaluable for your game that you don't necessarily have to hear that from the coach. You can actually see it yourself and you're aware that it's, it's going on. Yeah. Now, in regards and into comparison, before you come to the pro player pathway and you joined us on the program, do you think it's been a big help and a big advantage to being on the program? Yeah, definitely. Like, especially like knowing about like how much hours and again a week. Like normally, I, I wasn't doing much before, but like I really worked in the hours. So, how many hours a week are you currently doing at the moment, Nathan? Just so our listeners can get an idea of what you've got to do. The 16 plus 1, so 17 hours. And of those 17 hours, you're doing about 70% football and then the rest is things like other sports recovery. Yeah. So within your 11 or 12 hours, obviously, you're doing football. What what do you do outside of football for the other four to five hours? Can you explain to our listeners some of the things that you do? Oh, I do a lot of running, like cross-country, like... Um, like maybe the gym in the morning go to the gyms or like swim so like recovery once 
That's amazing. And again, you've obviously noticed since you've upped your hours, you feel like your game's getting a lot better, you're a lot stronger, a lot fitter. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Well, look, Nathan, a big thank you for joining me on the Raymond Wood podcast. We are super excited to keep working with you. Obviously, for anyone who's listening, the program, we do have scholarships available. If you're interested to reach out to us, we do come around not only cities in Australia, but we're going to be going to New Zealand, the USA, Canada, and into the Middle East over the next 12 months. So if you are interested in coming to see us at one of the events or you'd like to have a meeting online, we could consider you for one of our scholarships. We can't promise, but you can apply now online to apply for one of the scholarships. So Nathan, for any boys and girls out there who are thinking, oh, this sounds like something I really, really want to do. I'd love to play professional. I'd love to have trials opened up for me. I'd love to get a scholarship. Would you recommend it to the boys and girls listening on it? Yeah, it's once to life opportunity, so definitely don't miss it. Amazing. And look, Nathan, we, we wish you well. Just again, for everyone who wants to join us, the program is a minimum of four years. If you are younger than 16, we'll work with you up until your 16th birthday to achieve that scholarship opportunity as well. So we're looking forward to working with you over the next few years, Nathan, and hopefully maybe one day pulling on that jersey for Shamrock Rovers or maybe Arsenal. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Well, a big thank you, Nathan, for joining us. And a big thank you from me at the Raymond's World Podcast. Again, if you want more information, you can go to proplayerpathway.com or you can go to eurofootballstar.com or you can drop us an email to service at eurofootballstar.com and all of our contact website links are in our show notes below and we're going to wish Nathan the best of luck for the future. So big thank you from me and Nathan and everyone at the Raymond's Wolf Podcast. Have a great day.